Here's how to solo unlock and complete the new Dark Eater Rift added with Season 2 Reloaded in Modern Warfare Zombies. This includes a solo walkthrough for the new Act Formation called Counter Measures, with a guide to get an attune all quest items to open the second rift. This rift is much easier than the first, at least in my opinion, and the Elder Stigel version contains all three new schematics just like before. This time, the new items are the following. The plans to craft the VR11 Wonder Weapon, the keys to call in the Bloodburner Motorbike, and the schematics of the Mag of Holding, which removes the need of reloading. So without further ado, let's start with the recommended setup for this story mission. First, select and activate counter measures from your story mission tab, and then start with a bullet weapon with epic rarity and tier 2 pack a punch, which is more than enough this time. But if you want to go overkill, feel free to use anything you have. I use my favorite MCW assault rifle, it's just the old reliable for me, but you can use any bullet weapon with high enough firepower. Bring in monkey bombs, casimirs, or decoys. Your perk setup isn't that important this time, but I I still recommend getting as many as possible. And have 4 empty slots in your rucksack. Also having frenzied guard as your field upgrade to repair your armor and the durable gas mask will help a lot. When you are ready, activate the small portal to start the mission in the high threat zone which will be marked on your tech map. Then you will be teleported to the dark ether. All the zombies will be tier 2 enemies and you have 30 minutes inside to complete the mission. You have to activate 3 obelisks to complete 3 challenges and obtain the hidden quest items during the mission. So after you spawn in instead of following the objective, you have to go on top of this ship next to you. If you decide to bring in the Scorcher, you can move around more freely and instantly jump up there, but let me show you the intended way. Climb on top of this billboard all the way to the top and then jump on this truck. Then jump on the ship and run all the way along until you see the obelisk. Activate it and get melee kills inside of a circle, but the game will give you an insta kill so there's no need for a melee weapon. This sword is only for visual purposes. So after less than 10 melee kills a portal will spawn containing the gloves and you can pick them up as your first quest items. Now you should progress the story mission and escort the ACV until it stops in front of the mall. Instead of going inside, take the same route as me in the video and stop right in front of this glowing sign. Then turn around and run into this dried out river filled with mysterious fog. A super neat area by the way. Here you will find the second obelisk in the middle of an ethereum crystal circle kind of thing and after activating it a ring will spawn and tablets will float around the obelisk. Each tablet corresponds to an ammo mod and they say which one is which while the ring also corresponds to an ammo mod. So you have to put the matching ammo mod on your weapon and get kills inside the ring. Just as a heads up, the tablets won't immediately put the ammo mod on your weapon, you have to pick them up from the ground. I'm pretty sure the order never changes, so it starts with Napalm Burst, then Cryo Freeze, then changes to Dead Fire, and ends with Brain Rot all the time. So after killing enough zombies in each circle, a portal will spawn containing the pristine mirror, and you can pick it up as your second quest item. Now it's time to head back to the mall and destroy all cysts inside. Having that perception can help you a lot with this task. And just as a tip, the cysts are always around the staircases and the middle sections of the three main corridors of the mall. Plus, don't forget to repair your gas mask with ammo refills inside. Once done, continue escorting the ACV until you reach the soccer field. Before you activate the PND, leave the field following the same route as me and you will see the last obelisk on this crossroad. Activate it and get headshot kills inside the ring. This time that shot can help you a lot, but once you get enough headshot kills the portal will spawn containing the target and make sure you pick it up as your third quest item. Then return to the field, activate the PND, survive the outlast and prepare for a smaller scale boss fight. Thank god it's not an eater worm this time, but an electric mangler. Just focus on shooting off his helmet and always target his head for extra damage. Also do not leave the field. I mean it because he will regenerate his health. Also, as long as you keep your distance and use your tactical and field upgrade, there won't be any problem in this fight. So after you kill the mangler, another portal will spawn containing some random loot and the already upgraded drum which is the final quest item. Now you can exfil, enjoy watching the cutscene and ready yourself for upgrading the three purple items on Earth's extent. First, let's start with the gloves. Head to the boxing gym in F8 and enter the ring while the quest item is in your rucksack. You will receive a prompt to offer the relic. And when you do so, the screen will shake indicating you did it right. Now you have to melee these punching bags until all three are set aflame. This will spawn a special zombie with red flaming hands and you must melee kill it inside the ring, but 
you can only use your fist. If you have two weapons, you must draw one of them and after killing the zombie you can pick it back up alongside the ultra rarity version of the gloves. Ok, so next, let's continue with the target. Head over to the firing range in H8, next to Shaheen Manor, and offer the relic here. You have to shoot all 8 purple glowing targets in this area, and you are doing it right when the target is set aflame. You can locate them all around the firing range, but they always spawn in the same spot as seen in the background footage. The order doesn't matter, and even though there's a time limit, the game gives you like 2-5 to five business days to complete this, so like, I can't believe someone can mess this up. But after shooting the final target, back to the topic, a special zombie spawns again, and this time you can only damage it via headshots. After killing this enemy, you can collect the ultra reality version of the target. Lastly, we have the pristine mirror, and to upgrade that, you must head over to I3 to the church with the graveyard. Go to the left after facing the church, and you will find this tomb with the mirror on it. Offer the relic, and watch a zombie spawning in, radiating with an element. Behind you, the center building will start glowing and have tablets inside each corresponding to an ammo mod again. You must kill the zombie with the corresponding ammo mod, so if the zombie is burning, use Napalm Burst. If it has a purple glow, use Deadfire, Icy Mist equals Cryo Freeze, and the Green Smoke equals Brain Rot. There's only one zombie in solo, so it's not a big deal, and this number scales with the team size. So after killing the elemental zombie, you can collect the ultra reality version of the mirror. Now you have to head over to the northern part of the tier 3 zone and place down all the items to spawn in the new roof. You can find 4 pedestals around the radio tower, each having a symbol card on them, and you have to go around and place the items on the pedestals. It's self-explanatory which items goes on which pedestal by their symbols, plus when the correct item is on the pedestal they start glowing. But before you put down the last offering, make sure you have a juggernaut suit ready and you call it in. For the sake of simplicity, there's no reason to do a correct setup when you can just buy a score streak for 10,000 points in the high threat zone. The tornado will then form the entrance to the new Dark Eater, but first you must kill an elite electric mimic. That's why we need the juggernaut suit. Once done, you will get a sigil and the portal stays there. Forever. From now on, if you want to go inside the Dark Eater, you have to insert a sigil into either side of the portal. You can get normal sigils from tier 3 contracts, while the other sigils are exclusive drops from the Dark Eater itself. The normal version allows 30 minutes inside, less intense spawns and no way to earn schematics, only worth it for elder sigils. On the other hand, the elder version only allows 15 minutes of playtime, intense zombie spawns and every reward portal has a chance to contain a new schematic. Well, this is the only difference compared to the first rift. The new schematics are not guaranteed to drop and may require multiple runs to get all of them. So from now on, I will focus on the other Siege of Dark Eater for the rest of this video to form the new schematics. But the strategies can be applied to the normal version too. You can also watch a full other Siege run with a minimalistic approach on my channel and the following tips and tricks I share are based on that gameplay style. So this time instead of saying use this or use that, I will only show the bare minimum. I boldly assume that if you are watching this video, you have already completed the Red Worm or the First Rift and everything else in the game and have plenty of schematics to choose from to make your run easier and more tailored to your playstyle. So the bare minimum things for a run are the following. A Juggernaut suit for the Big Bounty contract, 3 Casimir Black Hole grenades for the Eater Extractors, and Energy Mine as your field upgrade and some more Casimirs for the Outlast. And under some more, I mean... 8 at the very max, but it's manageable to get that many during a setup run before you enter the portal. Ok, so after you insert a sigil and you spawn in, you can see the Dark Eater bunnies in front of you and you must go to them so they fly away. In this image you can see the map of the new Dark Eater with the exfil and contract locations and they are always in the same spot. So I absolutely recommend doing the big bounty first and depending on the target's location, you can go for the next bunny. This contract is right behind where you spawn in this big warehouse, just follow the same route as me and jump inside the window to the kitchen to activate the contract. The target is random so it can be either a mega bomb, a mangler, a mimic or a disciple, but no matter which one you get since the juggernaut suit melts away their HP. So the entire strategy is just that. Just reach the location, call in the suit, wait and survive, this is the hardest part, and when you have the suit, just kill the boss and get the reward portal to spawn in. If you are lucky, you can get a new schematic, if not, you can move on to the next contract. 
Next, at least in this video, we are going to move on to the Atlas contract that you can find on top of this middle building in the city. But if you get a disciple as the boss, the closest contract to that is the Eater Extractors, so I would recommend doing that instead. But back to the Atlas, it takes place in this nice open building near the Carnival, and if you have golden armor, a friendly hellhound, eater blades, or any basic setup, I doubt you will have any problem with this. Just make sure you use energy mine, throw some Casimir's here and there, but make sure you save exactly 3 for the next contract, and just run circles, jump across the counters, you could even leave, do a loop outside and come back until the bar reaches 100%, and when it does, a reward rip will spawn again and you have a chance to get a schematic. The last contract is the Eater Extractors, and you have to do a little jumping puzzle to reach that one, unless you have the Scorcher. It's at the top of the mall, and the intended way to reach it is the following. Head to the parking lot and climb on top of this car to jump on the crates. Once on the roof, follow the same route as me to reach the bunny at the very top. Once it's activated, jump down and run towards the first rocket. Throw a Casimir and defuse it. Then run to the next, throw a Casimir and defuse it, and just repeat for the last. It's the best to have energy mine ready to check the reward drift, but it's not very necessary. So at this point the only remaining thing is to exfil, and I would just run back to the exfil portal near I-7 inside the police station, or run to the one in the dried out river in D9. There's one more out in the desert in G4, but it's very risky and too far away, so I would just avoid that. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video, so if you find it helpful, please leave a like and subscribe because it took me quite a time to put this video together. You can also watch my full no commentary gameplay of the Adder Siege or Dark Eater run like I said before, so thank you all for watching and see you in the next one.